Hello, adventurers, and welcome back to the Cannon Fodder Diecast. Before we dive back into the action, we want to give you a brief recap on what went down last time in episode 23. This episode is part two of a major story arc set at Castle Neritar, a decrepit and long-abandoned stronghold in the Mirror of Dead Men. The castle was held by the Cult of the Dragon and its forces of Bullywug and Lizardfolk. Last time on the diecast, the crew decided to sneak into the northeastern and most dilapidated tower of the castle, which included a water skiing stunt over a moat filled with snapping alligators and a Tarzan swing over a garbage pit. As they began to explore the castle's tower, however, Cesaria was set upon by screeching poltergeists, the spirits of three murdered astrologers. And everyone survived, believe it or not. Now they find themselves preparing to continue their infiltration of Castle Neritar, and that is where we will begin this episode. Diecast episode 24. So you've cleared one of the four towers. Um, unfortunately, there's no windows out of this darkened room up above, so it's not like you can go anywhere else. So the way out is apparently by the door on the first floor. Okay. So what do you want to do? Let's, let's... So we cleared E. Yes. Let, let's go to the door. All right, so you're going back down. As you cross the second floor, you need to make a dexterity save, but I'll give you advantage on it because you've done it once before. Just make sure you don't fall into the muck. 22. That's enough. Leaky cartwheels across. 10. That's just enough. Dexterity? Yep. Make sure you do your save. Oh, my saving throw. 14. All right, so you guys cross, so that puts you down the ground floor. Now, the stone steps stop right next to the door. You're able to kind of shimmy across and get to where the door is into the courtyard beyond. So that would put us at area, um, actually, I didn't label it, but it's the area next, between R and E. So that's actually area D. The door here is a wooden door that is firmly shut. Firmly shut? Yeah. So it's, it's a well-built door. Even though this tower is in terrible condition, they obviously built this door to be snug to keep in the stink. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Very even e- even though there's a gaping hole on the other side, they don't care about it going out. They don't the care atmosphere. about it going out that way. That's over the fifty foot wall. Oh, mm. can I do investigation with my ear against the door? That would be perception. Otherwise, yep. it's a very finely built door. <laughs> <laughs> perception. Has it been sanded? Let me check with my ear. <laughs> Let me check with my tongue. <laughs> anyway, 17. Like 17 er, is enough to hear. 27. That is, okay, 27 is plenty to hear. Um, heavy footsteps, footsteps kind of walking back and forth outside. Heavy footsteps. That could be anything. So this it is could be a being wiz- patrolled. It could be a lizard person, which are supposed to be on our side. Well, the ones outside the castle are. No, but they're, peop- they're lizards that also work inside the castle. That doesn't mean the message has been conveyed. It's been 12 hours. Probably. I'm stealthily of 22. Okay. Going to stealthily open the door. Okay, you see a guard drake walking back and forth. Yeah, it's not a lizard person. Tear, damn it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leaky, you should go first. It's a guard. He's a little low on health after the encounter. Right. Low on can, health? Your health is more first. than... My health is high still. Both. My health is high. still so at 75. Doing? Okay, hold on. Before you go blundering out into the open here, let's talk about what Cesaria sees. There is a keep that is at least three floors tall that dominates the center of this inner ward. There is a wall with an open arched gate off to the south that opens deeper into the castle. So it goes south. Across the way, there's another tower that's three floors up, and all around this, there's that curtain wall that's 50 foot high. Um, And that's about it. So the only way out of this area would be to go to the keep, which is the central tower, 
or to sneak south, which is at least 60 feet, um, to sneak towards that open gate towards the inner ward. Okay? So, so area C, in other words. Otherwise, you're cutting 120 feet across the courtyard to head towards what appears to be the other wall where there are several doors and the lights are on in there. Let's not run across the courtyard. Yeah, let's, yeah, I agree. So this is dangerous. So what do you want to do? Because remember, you're trying to sneak in. And I just want to be clear because sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we start swinging and screaming and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And then like, oh, right, the point was to sneak. And if you want to be true to what your original goal was, <laughs> you managed um, to have a mostly silent fight with those, uh, with the specters. And you haven't caused any other noise, but this is your first time setting foot inside the castle properly. So what do you want to do? Uh, how do we get to Area R? Or what is Area R? We're right here. Without right any now. lizard folk, since you chose not to go with the lizard folk through the main gate, you're not sure what Area R is. It is a three-floor tower, though. Can we not see a way in from Area D where we're at? Yeah, you're looking out into D. No, you can't see a door into that tower from here. Okay. There are doors in the wall... That would be area Q, um, but it's again, it's 120 feet across to that. Yeah. And by the way, at the top of the tower, there are four gargoyles that look down in each direction. Um, that is a dome up above, and the like gargoyles sit alive. in all directions. Oh, so, no, what if we. Because I'm wondering, because I wouldn't be able to pass off as a cultist, but I might be able to pass off as a guard. All the guards are cultists. Are they all cultists? This is a guard drake, which I... is a lizard. We've run into these before. You um, want to explain to her what they are? They are a... Angry kimono dragons, essentially. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to be able to pass as one of those. Okay. Well, I, I thought it was just a guard, and if it was a guard, we might be able no, to get away with it. No, it's just a, a subclass of the drake. Okay. So these ones are all black guard drakes, by the way. So do we Great. notice, can I do um, an invest or a perception check to see if there's any pattern to the way that they're walking? Hmm? A perception check to see if there's a pattern to their their watch, march. Sure. Okay. Um, I got a, um, a 20, a natural. Actually, so, 18 on natural, I'm sorry. 18 on natural, so it walks around the keep and then it comes back. The one that comes back is limping and then it lopes back. And another one comes back. This one's not limping. How much time is in between them? Uh, it's pretty much a constant stream. So there's two they're, together. They're, one's they're pacing limping. like they're caged in here. So I wonder if we could take out one, and then we might be able to slide down the hallway. Yeah, but the other one is going to notice. By the time we take out one. Do they see, like, are they that close where they can see the one in front of them? They're no, but here. by the time... You're be fighting in a big empty courtyard made of stone. I'm not saying fighting. I'm saying we, like, slip them through the door... And we tie him up. Um, it's a lizard. This is a medium dragon. Mm. <laughs> well, we're try I'm trying to stay true to the nine foot stone. long and four foot high at the hip. I'm trying to stay true to the sneaking element. Okay, I understand that, but what I'm saying is that that plan would backfire immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you guys think of something. I don't like our drinks. I don't either. You know, I, don't, I don't see another way around this. Other than... Murder. Running 120 feet, which is not going to go well. Well, you can also run to the southern gate, which is about 60 foot. Can I stealth and do or blah, stealth and dash? Uh, you can. They can't. I might be using my misty step again, guys. I only how, had to use it once earlier. How Maybe. far can you go on misty? 30 step? feet. Yeah, I can get 60. halfway there. She could stealth once, and she'd teleport 30 feet. Cesaria could. Stealth and dash. That and leaves me. That leaves Leaky clattering and clanking with all of his scratchy crabs, currently unobserved and, and clicking. You could dash. Running 60 foot. Yeah, but I can't stealth. Why? Just stealth he, and walk. And yeah, pray. And it's only Twice. 35. Twice. Pray. It's a constant stream of guard drakes. That's not going to work. Something rumbles underneath the trash below your feet. I'm going to stealth and dash. Are you I'm going, going to south, or are you going across to area We Q? should go to area C. I'm going to it's do a quick investigation check to see if there are any cultist robes in the trash. Okay. I got a 12. No. 
I was trying to find something that you might be able to sneak through with. A tentacle pops up above, though, as you root through what you can see. A tentacle pops up above, and it kind of like probes the air with little nostrils. We need to get off the trash, ball. guys. Yeah. Now. Uh, like the young man. Um, so my stealth is a 29. Okay, so Cesaria... I'm stealthing and dashing. Okay, so she runs... To Area C. With her elf feet. So you're at the gates to Area C. That's about 60 foot. Yep. So My... you're right there, you're safe. Yep. Okay. I guess that makes it me. Oh, so boy. I'm going to stealth first and then Misty step. So those are two different actions. Yep. So you get to do one now. Stealth first and then Misty oh, okay. step. Okay, I hear. I fail. I got a three. So you trip and fall in the middle, and you cause a big clattering. All right. Yeah. And the guard drakes come barking and bang, bang from around the corner. I'm going to misty step. That's the next action. You don't have that chance right now. Darn it. So, I have to so like I said, you can only do one this turn. Okay. What do you want to do? You're behind her. We're about to have some sort of action and initiative here. No point in stealthing. I am going to... Ready a hand axe to throw if they if the guard drinks attack Corey. Okay, roll for initiative. Sorry. Thirteen. One five. Okay. Um, so Cesaria, you see the guard drake bang and coming around the corner. The one without the limp. This one's moving quick. What do you want to do? Arrow. Don't sure. attack it yet. They may not attack. I'm That's why I readied an action. I'm gonna in ready case. an arrow in case they attack Corey. Okay. Alright, that makes it Corey's turn. Because I'm still stealth, right? Yeah, you're still stealth. Okay. Alright, I'm going to an attempt to move closer to the door that um, Cesaria is in. Are you you just sprinting all out now or Yeah. So you go thudding across the stone steps. Okay. Might as well. I mean, it's either that they're either gonna attack me or not, so you might as well move that way. Okay, so they hear you and follow you, I guess. Okay, so it's their turn. Well, it's it's your turn because you you move your thirty feet, so you can do so. You can take an action now. You can try and restealth. Um, I think no, they see you me. can't do a hide it. Or actually, you could do a hide action, I suppose. Um, I'm actually going to try to talk to them. Do you? Sp okay. What do they speak? I'm not telling you. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try talking to them. Okay. So you're going to attempt to. Do diplomacy with the dragon. All right. Yeah, why not? Sure. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh. would you like you roll for? Uh... I guess it's a charisma check with what persuasion? Okay. I got a six. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't speak common or whatever it is that you just uttered at it, and it just continues to bark and run at you, and you hear other voices being raised too. So, all right, so uh, Corey failed to diplomatically negotiate with the guard drake, which is angry and bearing down on you. That makes it their turn. You guys they could move a heck of a lot it. farther than you do, and that they never immediately ends. move to yeah, bite at Corey because. Wait. Okay. They're attacking. I have the ready to action. So okay. Twenty-one. That's a hit. For seven damage. Okay. It now has a hand axe embedded. Great. It's got a handle. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling this is gonna go. Very... This is gonna go really bad for you. For who? I, you plural. <laughs> to be fair, Kyle was also. If I had made that much of a racket, Kyle was gonna have a really hard time getting over to us. Yeah, maybe. But he could have taken a short rest and used a hit dice or something. All right. So Cesar, you also had a ready to action, if I recall. Is it time to use it? Yeah. Okay. Fistful O die. <laughs> Just we, proceed. We broke our DM. Fifteen? Is it enough to hit? Oh, God. Ten. Nineteen. Twenty-five. Christ. Is it enough to kill it? So, I, do you want to narrate what just happened? I just shot an arrow through its eye. And... I don't... Crap. Uh, is thirteen enough to re-stealth? Um, well, there was nothing there, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, the other ones didn't see. Okay, so that one's dead. The axe falls out and clatters onto the stone. Unfortunately, the one with the limp comes bursting around the corner, and it barrels at Leaky, because now it sees him standing in the door. 
And now, and oh, well, I'm closer. And now you're closer. So it's going to barrel into you. Barrel into me. Yeah, it's charging at you. So. So would this be a strength this contest? This is a strength contest. Yeah, and it. Uh oh. What's your strength score? Because I'm contesting your score. 18. It rolled a 19. So it just headbutted you back into the muck. Great. So, try to avoid this, but no, we make it as hard as we can. <laughs> we're playing D and D, and the worst ideas are all the ideas. No, we're playing diecast D and D. I need Which you means... to make a. Um, hold on. I need, first of all, that tentacle that you saw whips up and it grabs at you. It wraps itself around your foot. What did I do? <laughs> the worst. The you did the monster. worst. So it's going to try to make a tentacle strike, and it does plus six on its hit, and it does piercing damage. It rolled an unnatural 20. And that tentacle rolled an 11 damage. And here's the thing. You need to make a DC constitution save, five plus the damage, so equal to 11. Or you get dragged down into the muck. Leaky going to die. Natural 20. Okay, so you're able to break through the tentacle. Okay, so there's something huge and now roaring down below at you. And a third guard drake comes barreling around the corner. Christ. I told you there were two different looking ones. Nobody seemed to follow that up anymore. So one well, guard drake... You said drake, there was one with a limp and one without. I said another. I picked my words very carefully. <laughs> You'll hear it in the cut. I said, and then another one comes back. So one of them's dead... One of them has a limp, and that one is standing over the stone steps, barking at you, snarling, and I don't know, probably sounds vaguely like Draconic. Unfortunately, none of you speak that. And a third one comes dashing at Cesaria and Corey, whoever... Cesaria's doing. hidden. Cesaria's hidden, but it's coming after Corey. Um, the noise of the axe drew it. So, that makes it Cesaria's turn. Leaky's in the muck, fighting with some sort of... Squid wait, monster. wait, what happened to my turn? Oh, there you are. Okay, Leaky, go ahead. <laughs> so Leaky's in the muck being wrestled by some sort of giant trash tentacle. There's the guard drake up above you. And if you get pulled under, I don't know, I hope you have breath. <laughs> <laughs> so do I have footing to charge back at no. the drake? No, you have to fight your way out of You're the muck. You're fighting your way out of the muck, which is in itself an action. Just rage and get you're, it over you're with. You're thigh deep in crap and refuse and garbage and litter. Just rage and get it over I, with. I'm, I'm pissed now. Mm -hmm. I'm angry! I tried to avoid this. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I he warned did you. give us all the signs and we just overlooked them. As <sighs> usual. Alright, so what... How, how am I fighting my way out of the pit? So you can either do an athletics check... That's going to be pretty heavy to get up and out. Or you can, I guess, just start chopping at tentacles as they come warping up at you. So, question for the DM. Sure. Athletics is a strength-based check. Yes, I know. I'm raging. Yeah. Which means I get advantage on strength checks. I see no issues here. So I get advantage on the athletics check. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is a 24. Well, that's great. Unfortunately, a tentacle comes whipping up at 18. And Not it tries enough. to grapple you. Not enough to hit you at 18? Not enough to hit me at 18. Oh, okay, what's your, what's your armor class? 20. Okay, so 20. How did the 19 hit you then? Because it was a strength. Oh, right, okay. Strength is gotcha. 18. Okay, armor so class is 20. The tentacle misses you. So you trudge through. Trundle. Trundle through the muck, and you're able to lift yourself up. Unfortunately, there's a guard drake right there. Okay, I can deal with guard drake, because the jar guard drake isn't going to try and drown me. That's true, typically, yeah. It's going to try to bite at me with an attack of opportunity. And that's a 21. And... No, it's a, it's a dirty 20, sorry. And it does... 11 piercing damage. So if you do that's half. Yes. Okay, so you're now on the ledge with the guard drake, in danger of falling back in. There are tentacles erupting up to chase at you. Okay, now that makes it Cesaria's turn. Are you going to start making camps now? <laughs> no, 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 got no. it? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. What are you doing? 
Attacking. <laughs> I'm oh. attacking. Okay. She, she rolled all her die, so. Attacking which one? And with what? I imagine the one that's barreling down at Corey. At Corey. Thanks. You're on the other side of the hall. She's got a bow. Mm. Yeah. You're in another room. It's in the door. <laughs> you obviously can handle yourself. All right, so 24. <laughs> Unless it knocks me back into the muck. And I'll deal with it. If she kills, I'll come for you. 24 is enough to hit. Okay. 21 damage. That's a killing blow. Good what? shot. And then... Oh, my God. Okay. Stealth of 17 to hide back into my shadows. All right. Cesaria slips back into the shadows after killing a second guard, Drake. Okay. So me. Um, so the there's one that's coming... We hear one running towards us, right? She just killed that one. No, there are three of them, though. The other one is standing over Leaky on okay. the stone oh, so lip. Third one's there. Okay, so I'm going to head... So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to take my 30 feet, and then I'm going to throw my javelin. Okay. Um, so I'm going I to shoot it at the one that's not I'm trying to get to Leaky. Okay. Since it's our third one left. Don't miss. I'm going to try real hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to punch this guard? Dra- I, I don't understand how you're going to fight this thing in such close proximity. I have scratchy X. So I got 17. Is enough to hit. Um, I do 11 damage. Okay. So she spears it in the side with a javelin that just suddenly appears unbidden. It's just a surprise to Leaky inside the door. <laughs> 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 Handles. So that makes it the NPC's turn. There's only the one guard drake remaining, but we still have some sort of disgusting, trashy tentacle monster. That is just it just it loves its environment. It's just evolved for it. So, strength contest. It has no choice. I don't, I think unrealistically it could bite or claw you, but it's just physically dominating you right now. It's huge. But wouldn't the javelin distract it? Yeah, it failed. Okay. It rears and tries to see where the heck the javelin came from. Because I mean, its butt is sticking out of the door, so it's now <laughs> sprouted a secondary, very thin tail. Leaky, your turn. <laughs> Can I reach the handle? No, it's through the door. <laughs> So what do you want to do? Are you going to swing at it or are you going to try the strength contest? Uh, I'm going to strength contest it and try and throw it into the pit. Fair enough. Natural 20. You fling it into the... <laughs> it over... It, handle and everything. You fling it into the muck. Can you try to grab my, hand, my handle? Because that's my javelin. With a natural 20, can I rip the javelin out? Sure, that's okay. gross. Blood goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make a tentacle attack against that thing just for the sake of doing it. It misses, but then it tries to bite it. So you see a vast <laughs> eyeless mouth come up out of the muck with just teeth sticking in every direction. It, this is a messed up looking animal. It rolled a 24 and it does over 20 damage. I don't want to do the rest of the math on that. And it grapples it and drags that thing down into the muck. It just vanishes back into the garden. And I'm the only one that sees this. Yes. No one's going to believe me. <laughs> the trash just flows in back over it. So we need to find somewhere to safely rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah that I... was a quick but nasty fight. Do you feel like the king of the garbage now, or have you seen the true king? <laughs> I have seen the true king. You are now the prince of the garbage. The prince of garbage. Um, it's just like flour and water. So that's it. However, you can hear voices being raised around the castle. So uh, what do you want to do? The three of you are safe. Leaky's filthy. Um, when well, is he not? I mean, <laughs> let's be fair. He did almost get to. He almost got to give him a bath earlier when he went to the creek. That's the closest you've come to being clean in a while. Yeah, but that's a really gross creek. Moat or moat, yeah. So what do you want to do? Uh, we need to leave the area yeah. immediately. So you, are you going to flee into the sea? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's it? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. So you're moving into C, so I'm going to read you what you see. Uh, moving into C, back. the outer ward. The ground here was once hard-packed earth, but the area in front of the barracks, which is area G, has been churned into thick, slippery mud. Um, you hear bullywugs yelling from inside there, as if like they're trying to clatter and get into their gear, and you see a troop of lizard folk b- burst out of area 1H. They're wearing new new metal armor. They're carrying good shiny weapons, and they go bustling past you. They just ignore you, and they go running into area one D. And you hear lots of hissing and yelling. So for a moment here, you're all alone. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? You want to go into L. You want to go into H. You want to go into G. You want to backtrack and go into U, into the keep. What do you guys think? 
Well, we know that H is where the lizard people are, right? That's where they came That's from. Where they came from. We should probably bustle into H because it seems like it would be empty. Okay, so let's try H. Okay, so you're pushing into H. Um, in H, you come into a large forge that's dominating the center of this chamber. And it's re really, really warm in there thanks to a bed of coals that, even though it hasn't been worked in several hours, is glowing dully in the forge. Um, there are half a dozen lizard folks standing around, and they're wearing armor and arms, but these have been left behind as a rear guard. And you see Snapjaw standing amongst them. And he's like, oh. what happens? Guard drakes. And he goes, are they alive? No. No. No? No. He's, he's like, what have you done? We tried. Plans have changed. Follow me. And he okay. beckons you on. Okay. You go with him. Do we say short rest then? We'll do a short rest, yeah. So, I think the lesson we learned is think our plans through a little more. I agree. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. All of our plans went wonderful, <laughs> except for that last one. <laughs> and the one before that. <laughs> And, and the, the one, one before, before that. that. <laughs> By the way, where's your 50 feet of rope? Corey we, had it last. It. Corey I tied said, it to a beam. I said we untied it. Okay. I just specifically sure. said we untied just it. Sure. And it's 48 feet of rope. Whatever. Two feet of ghost rope. <laughs> so, you've got six of the lizards, one of whom is Snapjaw, and they lead you up onto the second floor of the forge. You with me? Yep. yep. Okay. So the second floor of the forge is really hot because it sits right above that furnace. This is an arsenal. So on all the walls, there are weapons, racks of steel weapons that are in very good condition. The lizard folk tend these, they make sure that they're maintained. But the other thing that stands out to you is trailing across three of the four walls is this big, long, ash-smeared relief of a black dragon. The lizard folk file up the stairs behind you. Like an actual black dragon or like a half black dragon? Like an like a big long swirling black dragon. So um I ask, what dragon is this? They say this is that that is Vorag Menethar, their revered lord. So is this your personal room then? They don't know what that means. Is this room only for the lizard folk? Snapjaw says that this is where they gather. This is where they revere Vorg Manathar, who has not come down to save them from the nasty, hated bullywugs. So how have, pl how have plans changed? Well, you have alerted the castle to the fact that there may be an invader. And he sent a troop of his guards out to go examine what happened, but they're not sure how Born Grey will react. And, he says, Resimir is in the castle. Where? He's in the southwest castle, which is heavily guarded by both the cultists and the bullywogs. We didn't expect him to be here right now, but he's in, he's in the tower. She's in the tower. So. I stick my hand out. Nothing. Damn. <laughs> so, that was Leaky's hammer radar. <laughs> <laughs> mop, mop, mop. So are we no. able to rest in this place? He says, yeah, it's going to take a couple hours at the very least to sort out the commotion. So you can rest up here if you want. Nobody will come up here. Would this be because a long rest or a short rest? Short. This would be a short rest. It's a couple hours. Unless you need it to be a long rest, I guess. I'll be fine. I just, I, I use some spell slots. Do you need to use cure wounds on you? So no, you, I'm good. So you guys are resting up. This gives you an opportunity to ask the lizard folk any more information that you think that you need to know. Um... You can ask about Vorak Manathar, you can ask about the lizard folk situation, you can ask about the Bullywugs, you can ask about Resimir and the cult. Snapjaw, again, thinks that you're going to drive the Bullywugs out. So, um, tell me more about, uh, about the, your god. Vorak Manathar, yes. the dragon, is not a god, it's a dragon. Mm -hmm. And it is a black dragon that lives to the north. And these lizard folk of the Scaly Death Clan are sworn to Vorak Manathar, and Vorak Manathar told them to come and help the Cult of the Dragon here. Is uh, Resimir working with um, your, with the Vorak dragon? Manathar? Yeah, I can't yes. name, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, this is an allegiance okay. between the two of them, and so the lizard folk that guard the dragon's lair have been sent to assist Resimir. And in return, Resimir provides revered Vorak Manathar with treasure. So, do you know of any way that we could possibly get closer to Resimir? 
Uh, at the moment, it's it's too hectic outside. To go outside would would be to alert the entire castle, and you'd have to fight them all probably, because they'll fight to the death to protect Resmir. And then he'd flee. So during the day, is <clears throat> Resmir's tower less guarded while everyone is out doing other jobs? Uh, that that depends on whether or not Resmir is here, um, because Born Grey runs the castle. And they respect Born Grey. Born Grey teaches them and res- and respects them, and they think is legitimately sympathetic in their fight against the Bullywugs because he gave them the forge, even though they were supposed to live in the village outside of the castle. He gave them the forge because it's more comfortable for the lizard folk because it's so warm, and he is also trying to teach them how to make weapons. They're not really good at it, but you got to start somewhere. But you do got to start somewhere, yeah. So, Born Grey is really in charge. Resmir comes and goes. So, if Resmir is here during the day, is his tower le- more uh, is his tower less guarded than it is right now during the day? Well, he'll have his personal guard with him. So, Born so, Grey, where's Born? Where can we find Born Grey in the building? Born Grey uh, tends to work in the library or in the observatory, um, or he's in the caverns below the castle. But they're never really sure. They're posted on guards and given assignments. It's not like they follow him around all day. Does um, does Born Grey have any kind of sigil or anything else that he shows as a symbol of his of people who are working for him? Uh, I mean, he dresses like a cultist, but he's a half elf, and there's no other half elves in the castle. Is Born Grey a man or a woman? It's a male. And you said caverns, library, or observatory. Observatory, so, observatory above the keep. So, Snapjaw, out of curiosity, yes. when you see an elf, how different do they look to you from other elves? He does like a lizard blink at you. What I'm wondering is if somewhere, were, if another elf were to dress up as, say, Born Grey, <laughs> would you be able to tell the difference? W- would he personally be able to tell the difference? I'm just trying to get a perspective of the, li- the lizard folk. He doesn't really even understand the question. No. Would I be able to pass as Born Grey? With the proper but clothes. you're not born gray. <laughs> blink, blink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's a bad person to ask. <laughs> Would she be able to disguise herself as born gray and be able to pass as born gray, but not actually be born gray? I think you just confused him more. He's like, there's a lot of subclauses in that sentence, and I'm not really getting my head around why she'd want to pretend to be born gray. She's a female. Born gray is a male. Hey, Snapjaw, could you do me a favor? Could you get me a cultist cloak? He says, yeah, we can get you some cultist cloaks. Okay, could you do that for us, please, while we're waiting for everything to calm down? Sure, how many do you want? I'll go for three. Okay, he hisses at his buddies and two of the minions leave. We're, we're going to dress Cesario up and see if he can tell the difference and see if it's, um... If, if Cesario pretends to be born gray... <laughs> we're going to do visuals? <laughs> yeah, we're going to do visuals. <laughs> Okay, so an to... hour passes, and eventually they come back, and they've brought, like, eight different cloaks. Um, they're all kind of muddy and dirty, so they must have stolen them from wherever the laundry is. Okay, so, Cesario, you should put it on and pretend to be Born Grey. See if they can tell the difference. I try on the first cloak. Does this look like Born Grey? That looks like the adventure in, in the cloak. Visuals don't seem to be working either. Either that, or maybe they really can't tell the difference. It was worth a try. Ask, <laughs> ask, I, I think ask, this... ask your lizard folk if they can tell the difference between me and Born Grey in the cloak. They all like look at him and they hiss back and forth. They just they don't understand what you're trying to do. Trying to get through Apparently the castle they... without making more commotion. But he says that would be great because we had to convince them that, that the, the trash beast attacked the guard drakes. And That's why I want to alert. dress up the as... Are on high alert now. That's why I want to dress up as Born Grey so we can move... Quieter. But Born Grey is a male half-elf, and you're a female elf in a cloak that we borrowed for you. I'm kind of manly. He doesn't have concepts of this. He's a lizard person. All right, with that, we should probably figure out what our next plan of attack is. Yeah. Blink, blink. Well, maybe not attack. Or a plan of, or what our next plan is. Plan Do of we, action? Plan of action works. Do I at least look like a cultist? Could I pass as a cultist? He thinks that, yes, you could pass as a cultist. But he's like, are you, did, did you swear allegiance to Tiamat? I didn't think you were cultists. I thought you were here to kill the Bullywugs. 
We are here to drive out the bully bugs. We're trying to dress up as cultists so we don't cause more commotion. If we go quietly through, we'll cause less commotion that you have to explain. You can see the small lizardy gears turning as he's trying to process those two conflicting goals there. He's like, I, I can take you if you want to convert to the converter. We don't want to convert. And why do you want the robes? We want to pretend. You're supposed to kill the bullywugs. We're supposed to drive them out. You promised to kill them. No, we promised to drive them out. out. <laughs> He's not happy with this arrangement. It feels like you maybe changed the deal on him a little bit. I pat him on the head. It's not helping, Corey. It might. I don't know. Out in the out in the inner ward, you hear a really loud, loud croaking, angry voice yelling and shouting. There are some windows. Is we look out the window. Okay. Or, I, Leaky looks out Leaky the window. Leaky looks out the window. It's not like he grabs his friends like headlocks. <laughs> <laughs> but down below in the inner ward on the stone stairs, you see a bunch of lizard folk that are have gathered with their weapons, and you see a squad of bullywugs. There are ten of them surrounding a big, fat one who wears a crocodile head hat on his head. Like, the head of a crocodile is a hat. We and he wields this big bullywug. staff that glows a little bit up at the top. And he's yelling at the lizard folk. We need to take out that... I don't remember his name. Snapjaw agrees. You need to kill the bullywugs. Well, as you promised to do. No, we promised to drive them out. If we kill the bullywug leader... Then the other bullywogs. That's going to be really tough for the mother of frogs to hold her title if she kills one of the major bullywogs, though. He says that's Farblex Spattergoo. He's the one that that's killed our right. shaman. And he's the second in command. And we used to be the first in command. And then Born Grey came. And now we were the second. And now we're the third because he killed our shaman. And that's why all the bullywogs need to die. Well, I'm doing a persuasion check of 24 to get Snapjaw. To agree that instead of killing all of the bullywogs, we can sacrifice far black splatter goo. When you say sacrifice, do you mean ritualistically with stone daggers? As no. As Boric Manathar has commanded? If you wish. We'll kill him, and then... He pulls out a stone dagger from his belt. He's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. And then the other bullywog, his lesser little bullywog people, leave to me. They're all lesser. He agrees. But the one that wears the crocodile head on his hat, or as a hat. I'm not comfortable with this plan. Can, can, can you get him up here? They won't come up here. They don't like the heat. He says they, they're in the barracks at the night, gonna kill but they're the in the walks. caverns during the day. Or we try to convince the king thing to leave. I highly doubt well, it. Well, you, you are the mother of frogs. And I'd but rather sacrifice the... one bad king who, he does have a staff that's glowing. He could be falsely imprisoning the other bullywogs. But. I'd you... rather kill one bad king. You're, you're also. a deeply and... amphib amphibinarian optimism you have. And then drive out the other bullywogs. However, you are also only known as the mother of frogs to the era of Gulbatit Fen. We can try. Once their prince is dead, they'll be more likely to listen to me. You hope? If not, then we'll go with the, plan D. What's plan D? Death. Which I don't want to do. I, I, I don't like plan this. Plan D is probably the episode title. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do, and that's why I'm trying to find ways around it. Because I'm hoping also if we... I don't like this one. This it's is not for go me, bad. man. It, every time I've tried to push you in any direction, it always goes bad. So I'm dead silent. You do what you want to do, and I'll find a way to kill you for it. So the other thing, too, that I had a question about is, did we ever get any experience for the... Um, Star drinks? 150 Star drink. each. Okay, in total? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions about Vorg Manathar or other activities in the Mirror of Dead Men that the lizard folk might be involved in, about the bullywogs that are here? Is there here, any... Or? Point where Far Black Splattergoo is by himself. No, he always goes everywhere with his contingent of ten disgusting bullywug guards. I'm trying. What what what's the catchphrase for for all of our stuff? This is gonna go real bad, real fast. Best played plans of men go gang awry. So 
All right. So what do we want to do but for right now? But none of us are men. Because we don't have to do the um, we don't have to necessarily deal with Gloop Slurp, whatever his name is. Um, Spl Black. Black. <laughs> Splatter goo. Splatter goo. We don't have to deal with him right now. It does because the other thing too is once we take out or once we take care of um, Born Gray. Yeah, but we still have to s attempt to get around the castle to find him. Well, that and Resimir. So the the Resimir lizard folks start hissing run. behind you, and they're all going back and forth with Snapjaw. And he turns around and he goes, "We have a plan. What's your plan? We slaughter the Bullywogs." But then that draws attention. That's okay. They're dead. No. Borg Manifair will forgive we, you. We cannot let Resimir, Resimir escape. He has something of mine that I've been chasing across the world. Is, that, the is world. that the hammer? Yes. They saw it this morning. Where? Resimir has it. Of course. Her. She carries it around. She cannot escape. And if we slaughter the Bullywogs right now, the Bullywogs she are will an impressive run. force of hate and we will get. Violence. We will deal with them. I promise. By killing them. We will <laughs> deal with them. He critically failed. He believes you're going to kill them now. Great. Only on my terms. Great. When I say so. You're going to kill them. Okay. All right. Good. So what's our plan? Uh, I've tried, guys. If you guys don't like my plan, we can try and go get Resimir. They with... have cold reptilian logic. I, I don't know what you want. Which me. one is the southwest tower? Uh, that is the one in which... Re... No, on the map. Oh. Uh, it is this one. Okay. So he's an N. Somewhere in there. It's a, it's a three-floor tower. This is level two, by the way. I know. Okay. But he's over there. We're on level two currently. Right? Yeah. Because we went upstairs. Yes, you're on level two of, of the forge. So you're in the arsenal, which has that giant row of Vorag Manathar, the black dragon that's been seen in the area before. All right. Do you have any other questions about bullywugs or mere activity or anything that may have happened here? The only so, so an here. Aside, the only way that it seems if we're going to get past those without going murder hobo is by um, <laughs> is by dressing as cultists. You can try dressing as cultists and blending in. It's gonna so let me tell you, it's gonna be super awkward through the entire character with Corey. I feel like as a character player character outside a game, I would have to roll disadvantage every time I had to convince someone <laughs> that I was a cultist. <laughs> I have a feeling that as a DM, Travis is trying to get us to kill the Bullywogs. I'm playing in character. Okay. All right. There's not a rule of which ones we have to do first and which ones we have to do I second. vote we try and figure out where Resimir is first because he's the one that comes and goes. Do you guys have any other questions? Oh. Have you guys seen a giant frog? How big of a frog? Because there's some big nasty Bullywogs here. 15 feet tall. That's a big frog. That's a big frog. They hate it. They start, like, hissing and yelling. Because, yes, they have seen a gigantic box-shaped frog with three eyes and thick legs, as thick as a dragon's legs. Where? Where? Vorag Manathar carried it across the sky to the southwest a year ago. They were fighting. It was shooting lasers out of its eyes. <laughs> so he is not here? No, but they've seen it. Okay. It was flying south. I Vorag thought... Manathar was trying to kill it. I thought Very Borg Manathar was there... from the north. Yes. Very rarely does uh, does the revered dragon lord ever lose a fight, but the frog Hemoth escaped on that day, and there was much woe. The Bullywogs told us that the frog Hemoth is north, that the dragon carried it away north. I'm saying that Borg Manathar flew past here going south, fighting with it. Did it pick the frog Hemoth up from here? From from where the arrow gulp tip fin is a little bit to the south. Yeah, the fight went on for several days. And then where did it go with it? They don't know. It flew by. Which Lord direction? Manathar roves all over the sky, which is his great domain. Which he, which direction? Southwards. After fighting with it for several days. They told us it went north. So it went back towards Fair Gulp tip. Uh, Snapjaw, like, holds his finger up like he's trying to calculate direction, like, points back and forth, and he goes, yeah. South. We're being lied to. By somebody. Mm. Or you're dealing with a bunch of low-intelligence creatures. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, I don't know if the frogs know which way is north. Uh, insight check of 16 to see if Snapjaw's telling the truth. He doesn't have the capacity to lie, if we're being honest. He's telling the truth. 
So, so they, when, they saw it fly south. The Bullywugs saw it go north, is what you were told. The, which these means guys it's saw somewhere it. between... This isn't like, like an eagle carrying away a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a jumbo jet picking up a helicopter and then fighting with it in the sky. So whatever this was, they could have been flying all over the place. But in some way, the, the frog hemoth has been spotted again. But that was a year ago. It was a year ago. Has anybody seen it since? No, and Vorag Manathar has not taken to the sky in a year. Uh oh. It's alive. Is he injured? He's very defensive. He, re- he refuses to answer any questions. He might be dead. It's alive. Is he okay? Does he need help? Is he injured? I wouldn't let your filthy elven hands touch it. Try to help. All right, so it's a, what are we going to do next? I feel like our DM is leading us somewhere with the it's frog, frog hemoth. But that means we have to get back out of the castle in order to get back in it to get after Resimir. Which I feel like would be a lot of persuasion against Leaky. We could try going to talk to the, going to talk to the Bullywugs. About the frog hemoth? Yeah, sure. I'm assuming we're all huddled right yeah. now, so yeah. that the it's fake, an aside. So that the, the lizards are like basking in the heat. They're not paying you any attention. Mm-hmm. They got to talk about the about the great battle with the frog hemoth, which was like the highlight of the year for them. But uh they don't really care what you guys do, as long as you stop causing trouble. I'll try. Are you mocking them now? No. Well, I mean, they did think that her name was ah, for a while. <laughs> that was her fault. She reinforced it. <laughs> um. Yeah, we can go try and talk to the bullywogs. I guess. Are there any small groups of bullywogs that aren't? There's the patrol groups. There's the. There's some in the Barbican. Do we want to be dressed as cultists while we do this? Are the Bullywogs friendly with the cultists? Yes. Yeah, they, they serve the cultists. Okay. Then yes. Yeah. Are you, you're, you're going to sneak in and talk to them and then kill them. We'll see how, sure. the, night, we'll see how the night takes us. It's dubious. <laughs> <laughs> Where would we find one of these? Well, we said the king was just below the window, right? Well, he was out there yelling a few minutes ago, yeah. So they, they gather in the barracks. They have the adjacent chambers, which is area G on your map, um, which is another three-floor stone structure. Um, it's it's adjacent to the lizard folks tower, which is H-I-J-K-L. Um, but there's no doors that adjoin the two, so you have to go back out to the ground floor and walk across the inner ward if you're going to try to do this in broad daylight. With a seven-foot-tall Goliath. Dressed in cultist robes? Yeah, those cultist robes are like capri size on you. <laughs> I'm styling for the summer. Yeah, you're showing some calf. It's not summer. It's almost winter. She's it's prepping for disgusting. a flood. Huh. Well, you try to get that by the bullywugs. <laughs> like I said, I'm probably going to get disadvantaged whenever I have to convince someone that I'm actually a cultist. Yeah. Unless you two want to go ahead and I can stay back here. No, we're not splitting up. That always sounds bad. What? This could go real bad real fast. <laughs> I mean, we don't. Really... No matter what we do, let's quit pondering and just make a decision and go. <laughs> this has been a half an hour long conversation. We don't really have a, a good. There's nothing we choose is going to be a good choice. No. Let's go talk to the bully bugs. All right. Okay. Uh, what time of day are you going? They're in the caverns at night, or during the day, and they come back up to the barracks at night. It's oh. day, so they're in the caverns. So we probably want to do it at night. Okay. So since we've been chilling, why don't we complete a long rest? Oh, great. So it's been another couple hours as you wait for the sun to set, and gradually the castle kind of settles back down as the reality that the, the, the trash monster ate that guard drake. They fished its corpse out. So they more or less buy the fact that just something went terribly wrong there. By the way, I like the Star Wars reference there. Poor Limpy. Limpy? Limpy the guard drake. Oh. Well, they think that the lizard folk probably killed them because they're trying to break out, so... One more chalk up on the oppress the lizard folk board. <laughs> Being blamed for stuff they didn't do because they're not clumsy fools who have no plan. All right, so we're going to go to. Um, so we wait until night time um, or evening, and then we're going to head down to the barracks, I suppose. I am Travis. I am the Dungeon Master and producer of the podcast. I am Kyle Newcomb. I play Leaky, Exile of the Golden Tur Clan. I am Jen. I play Cesario, the Rogue Cleric. I am Lindsay. I play Corey Gothikanathi. Thank you for listening. Bye! Bye.
Cannon Fodder Diecast is a D&D 5e actual play podcast. The intro and outro tracks are composed by Kevin McLeod and used within their Creative Commons licenses. For more info, visit www.cannonfodderpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter at Cannon Fodder Pod, and that's C-A-N-O-N. If you like what we're doing, please leave a review on iTunes or consider supporting us on the Cannon Fodder Podcast Patreon page. And thank you for listening. It's not it's not ghost rope. It exists. It's not ghost rope. It exists. <laughs> it's it's ghost rope alone. And its name is Scratchy Scratchy Ask. It's it's around the axe head.